Well, good evening and welcome uh, to Zion this evening for our midweek Lenten services. I'm Pastor Joel, and it's a um, it's wonderful to be able to welcome you here. Whether you are here, I'm impressed that we have some people here in person tonight, but I'm also overjoyed that we have the opportunity to be able to welcome you by Zoom because there are a number of you that I think you should stay home. Um, that's not any com comment on your driving or anything like that, but it is cold and icy out there. So um, we are uh, going to be joining together throughout the Lenten season. So this Wednesday and for the next four Wednesdays um, at this time for worship, we're going to be doing Joyous Light. Some of you may remember we did that several years ago, just as a little bit of a shift, a change from the beloved Holden Evening Prayer. And I hope that uh, you enjoy that, this joyous light, as much as I know we love Holden Evening Prayer. One shift in, in uh, the announcements of the way that we're going to be doing this, we have heard loud and clear from a number of people that um, you really miss and want to be able to gather for a meal together in the fellowship hall beforehand. Um, we have a number, a couple of small groups who have done that, and they kind of provided for the meal for themselves. Um, a big part of the reason, the only reason we, well, the only reason we did not do that, really, was because by the time the mask mandate was lifted, we just, in the, in the Zion office, did not have the time to be able to orchestrate gathering enough food for everyone who would gather. So this is the way we're going to do it. We're starting next Wednesday. If you'd like to come for a meal for the community night and to join us together in some for some small group conversations and such, we're going to do it old Lutheran style with potluck. Um, so I encourage you, if you're able to, bring a soup. We're going to keep it simple. So I know sometimes potlucks, we like to embellish and one-up each other on what we bring. Um, <laughs> So keep it simple, bring a soup, or if you'd like to bring bread or whatever, um, then do that. And we are going to pray that, that it becomes like loaves and fishes, that there's going to be enough. That's, that was the, the main issue that we had here in the office. We just didn't feel like we could, could coordinate enough with, an, with that amount of time. So hopefully, if you're at home and next, next week is not snowy and icy, you feel free to join us at 6 o'clock uh, for a meal together, and then we'll come right into here, into the sanctuary for worship. So, um, a word, um, just a word of thanks for our musicians, Ryan, for playing on the piano again, and for uh, David and Noel for singing for this evening. Throughout this season, we're going to have a number number of other singers also, but uh, with this being the first week and first time for us to do Joyous Light in a number of years, we wanted to be able to start in this way. If you're here, or even if you're at home, if you do want to, many of you know that throughout the years, any offerings that are collected on these evenings um, go to local benevolence. And what that means here at Zion is that that kind of gets divided into three different ways. A third of it gets shared with ha uh, House of Neighborly Service. A third of it is um, shared within the congregation that as pastors are aware of people who have needs, we're able to help them. And a third of it gets shared for special projects that come, to, come before the council, and they're able to help with those local needs. So if you're here and you want to leave an offering, or even if you're online and you want to send something, please specify it for Lenten offerings, and we'll share it in that way. So for this, throughout the Lenten season, where our theme is ragged, Sometimes we feel a little ragged during this time. That's the point. Uh, and it is talking about spiritual disciplines for the spiritually exhausted. Uh, I think a lot of times, a lot of us do feel exhausted and uh, in many ways. But um, so this is not an expectation that you would do something at, that, you, you know, you have to work hard at, at it and feel even more ragged and more exhausted but something that we hope will be life-giving for you if you practice that. So tonight we'll be talking a little bit about prayer and how prayer can, can hopefully enliven your own life. So let's start now with joyous light. Totally forgot about that. David reminded me. I have it right here in my notes. On the, on the projection, you will see red text and black text. 
Red is for our leaders, and black is for, for the congregation to sing, except in one place where it's not, and I'll tell you when we get to that place. <laughs> but for now, when you see red, um, our leaders will sing, and black, then we invite you all to join with us. Jesus Christ, light of light, shine in your Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your people here. Joy is light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ. setting of the sun and we look to the gold of evening light we will raise our songs in praise of your glory and with all the universe unite joyous light of glory As we sing the holy three in one, fount of life and love and fire divine, we rejoice in you with the pure voice of gladness as we watch your light within us shine. The Lord be with you. And also with Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades. Night has fallen, and day's allotted span draws to a close. The daylight you created for our pleasure has fully satisfied us, and yet of your free gift, now the evening lights do not fail us. We praise you 
and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom be glory, honor, and power to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. This is the portion where I said it is what it is until it's not. Um, <laughs> So, so in this, for this song, you're going to see red and black, but instead what we're going to invite you to do is if you're on this side, you are one, side one and you'll follow Noel. If you're on this side, you're side two and you'll follow David. If you're joining us by Zoom, you can choose. <laughs> from me. O God, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is worthy of all praise. Let our prayer rise before you as incense, and with the lifting up of our hands, may we offer our whole lives to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A couple of brief readings for this evening, especially as we focus on um, these spiritually, spiritual practices. Um, our first reading is from Luke chapter 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, 
When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And we have a, oh, the word is, sorry, the, let's go back to that. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then we have uh, one verse from Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. The word is near you on your lips and in your hearts. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Over the last year or so, I have become increasingly aware that we talk too much and listen too little. It's not something that I'm saying that to point fingers at other people. I'm guilty of this too. But the thing that made me most aware of this is not conversations with other people, not meetings, though there's plenty of talking too much and listening too little in that. What's made me more aware that we talk too much and listen too little is prayer. Some of you may have noticed it's just been over the, it's not even been a year that, for example, in Sunday worship at the prayers of the people or prayers of intercession, I usually will add something about that of not just that we pray, we offer these prayers to God, but we also hope that we are listening to God. With prayer, we talk a lot. And I understand why. I think most of us have been taught that prayer is mostly about talking, right? I mean, from early on, I know for myself, uh, uh, early in life, being taught prayers with simple words. You know, many of us know some version of now I lay me down to sleep. Or at the dinner table, how many of you have learned, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Or some version of a prayer that that maybe everyone in your family knows and can say together, and you say the words and say amen, and then we're done. Even Jesus uh, tells us the, the right words to pray. When his disciples ask him to, to teach them how to pray, he says, when you pray, say this. And then he goes on to say it. And then he teaches them, Uh, what we have come to know as the Lord's Prayer, because that's the prayer that Jesus taught, right? By the way, how many of you are struck when you hear uh, a version in the scripture of the Lord's Prayer? That's not what, what we learn, right? Two different places in the Gospels, Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, and neither of them actually sound exactly like what we pray. (laughs) But let's be honest How many times have you prayed the Lord's Prayer and then said amen and you didn't pay any attention to a single word you said? I'm going to raise my hand. Anybody? (laughs) We, We all do it, I think. I think it's normal. I don't know. Maybe some of you have not done that. But for me, I know... Uh, You know, we get so distracted. We know the words by memory. So we know the words by rote so well that we we pray it and say amen and move on, right? We've done it. I think that it's sometimes, you know, it is that we just get distracted. Sometimes we might take for granted that those words we've been taught and we just think that it's enough just to do it, just to say them. We say the words, move on, voila, we just prayed, right? But what does it mean? How does praying like that change us, or how does it even change God? I'm convinced that, that if we put, were to put more energy into listening than we do talking, 
I am convinced. Sorry, I lost my place here. <laughs> um, that that th- the, this would mean so much more, this practice of prayer, both to us and to God. Uh, Martin Luther taught uh, about the whole catechism, but also uh, about the Lord's Prayer, that, that often he would be praying the Lord's Prayer and he would be st- stuck. He would just stop on one petition, one portion of the Lord's Prayer, and he would pray that over and over again all throughout the day, all day long. It didn't mean that he literally stayed there on his knees or however, whatever his posture of prayer was um, all day, but it meant that he would stop there and, and whatever that petition was, and he would just listen, not necessarily say the petition, um, thy kingdom come all day long, but he would listen. What does it mean when we pray, thy kingdom come? What are we looking for? How is God changing? How is God bringing about God's kingdom? How is God inviting us to bring about God's kingdom? The Lord's Prayer is a formula for prayer, but it's not a magic formula, as if we just need to pray it and then presto, something happens, right? Maybe we'll get everything we want, everything we ask for. But it is a formula in that it tells us all of the kinds of things that God wants to hear from us, all of the ways that God wants to talk to us, that God wants us to listen, right? So, Father, hallowed, holy be your name. God wants us to focus on what would that look like if God's name was really holy in our lives every day? Your kingdom come. What would it look like for us to be watching out for God's kingdom? What would it look like if, if we said, God, your kingdom come and make it happen in me now. Help me to be part of bringing your kingdom. Give us each day your daily bread. What would it look like if every day I just thought all throughout the day of how God provides for me and gave thanks for that? What would it look like if I started imagining how God actually provides for other people through me? And so on. All of these petitions of the Lord's prayers are specific ways that God says, here's how you can pray, or here's how you can listen. Both of them work. And what does that mean that we listen? I have to admit that when I listen for God in prayer, most often what I hear, if I'm not really trying, is a whole lot of nothing. I, I struggle with this sometimes. I'm not a very good listener, right? So I, I, that is the, the active part of listening is hard for me. Some of you have the gift to be able to listen and hear and discern God's voice better than me. So for me, I listen maybe through the Bible. I listen through Bible study and amazing ways that everybody else contributes to what I hear, what God is actually saying to me in that way. Um, I listen, some of you have heard me say, like, my best posture of prayer is running. I'm an active person, and so when I run, I pray, and I pay attention to what's around me, and that's God speaking to me. So, that's, so those are just some of the ways that, that I listen. But I still have to admit that I'm not always, every day, the most amazing prayer. I pray every day, but sometimes I do still just pray words, and I don't think about what I'm praying. And other days, I talk too much and I maybe ask or, or sometimes maybe even just tell God what I want and expect maybe that God will answer, not listening enough for how God might be speaking to me. Maybe telling God, uh, telling me how God is already working, like listening for how God is already working in my life or in the world or inviting me to participate in God's work. Fortunately, for those days, we also have another model of prayer. That's why we had two scriptures tonight, and we could look at all the different models of prayer all throughout the scriptures. But on tonight, we hear not only Jesus saying, here are the words you can pray, but then we also heard from Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And this comes as great comfort for me, that even when I don't pray as I should, even when I get distracted or maybe I'm a little selfish with my prayers, 
God is praying for me. Isn't that amazing to think about? God's praying for you. It works both ways, this prayer thing. That's why this week's specific spiritual practice for the spiritually exhausted, um, the practice that we um, commend to each of you is this ancient form of prayer. It's called the breath prayer. It's an ancient way of praying that, that uses really your whole body and rhythms of breathing in order to talk to God and, and especially maybe to listen to God. You start by choosing a Bible verse, a phrase that says something to you about God, a prayer maybe, and what you choose is something that will speak to you over and over again about God. And as you breathe in, you pray one phrase and then you breathe out and pray another. And you keep on doing this in a rhythm so that the God who breathes life into you will do so even in your prayer. So the small group guide suggested a number of ways. It suggested you could pray Psalm 23 in this way. You know, as you pray one phrase, you breathe in. As you breathe out, you pray another phrase. You keep doing that. Or there's a few other examples of, of prayers. As you breathe in, we would say, Holy Spirit, and you breathe out, breathe in me. Or breathe in, speak, Lord, breathe out, for your servant is listening. There's a lot of examples. Maybe it's something simple that's on your mind. Um, you can, as you breathe in, say Jesus, and then breathe out is peace. Listen for how God is talking to you about how Jesus is bringing peace in the world and through you. Maybe it's something that's going on in your life that, that you want to pray as you breathe in, healing God, and then breathe out, be with my loved one. Or look around in the world, breathe in, God of peace, breathe out, be with the people of Ukraine. I can promise you that if you try this discipline of prayer for this season, God will bless you. May not, God may not answer your prayer request exactly as you want or expect, but God will open your eyes, your ears, your heart. You may become more aware of how God is speaking to you. So if you're in a small group, I know, I know you uh, already practiced the breath prayer tonight, but I want to invite you, all of you, uh, you're, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're uh, at home joining us by Zoom, to join me just for a minute or so as we practice this together. And it's kind of hard because it's kind of hard for me to give instruction and actually breathe in, you know, but, but bear with me and let's give this a few moments. So first of all, I invite you where, wherever you are just to get comfortable. Get yourself in a comfortable position. One of the things I've learned is that we, if you sit with your foot, if you're with your feet flat on the ground, it's really actually a lot more relaxing. Ground yourself, literally. Pay attention to the ground and everything around you. And then I'm gonna uh, just ask you, just sit, sit quietly for a few moments and pay attention to your breath. Pay attention to God's presence around you. Imagine breathing God's spirit, life into you as you inhale. And then you, as you exhale, breathe out. Every, anything that's not of God. Breathe in. Hold your breath. And then breathe out. Next, breathe in. I'm going to invite you as you breathe in to pray a prayer. You can choose what the phrase is. I'm going to use that last one I said. God of peace, be with the people of Ukraine. So as you breathe in, pray one phrase. Hold it for a couple of long seconds and then breathe out. I'll let you do that on your own and stop talking.
almost hate to interrupt this moment of peace. But I invite you throughout this season, this Lenten season, to practice that, that breath prayer. Invite God to speak to you, and, and even in our weaknesses and our distractions and all the ways that we often talk, um, try to listen for what God has to say to you. The Spirit, spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Amen. salvation we pray to you for all those who govern give wisdom compassion we pray to you sun and harvest 
and food to fill the hungry, we pray to you. suffer in grief, pain, and sorrow, we pray to you. God of love, we thank you that you have kept us under your protecting care in the day that has passed. Bring your healing to the wounds of this day, those we have inflicted, those we have felt, those that trouble our world. Cover us this night with the wings of your grace and raise us to a new day with Christ, our light and our peace. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go now into the peace of this night. Thanks be to God.